Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for Wednesday Bible study. Today's a new day, and tomorrow's going to get better because we're going to read the Word of God to learn how to please our God and do His will. And before we get into the Word, I'd like to say a prayer. So please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for directing me to the scriptures that you want to be read today. And I pray that it's your words that speak out of my voice so that all the people you draw to hear this video will learn and just be blessed. And uh, your will always be done, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And so the word of God is true and faithful and never becomes void. So we look forward to reading it. If you have your Bibles today, please turn to Daniel chapter 9. We'll start reading verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolation. So the book of Daniel is a prophetic book. It talks about things happening in the future, which is where we are now, brothers and sisters. And what he's predicting is the city and sanctuary gets destroyed. Well, it's all about Israel, right? God loves the Jews. He loved them then. He loves them now. Everything revolves around Israel. And it goes on to say that till the end of the war, desolation is determined. So there's going to be a war in the near future surrounding Israel and in Israel in the Middle East. It says, though, that he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The Antichrist is going to be instrumental in developing a peace agreement when this war is going on, and there'll be peace. And it says for one week, one day equals a year, so it'll be a seven-year peace agreement. Then it went on to tell us that in the middle of the week, he, being the Antichrist, will put an end to sacrifice and offering. During this peace agreement, Israel will build the temple they've been waiting for, that they have plans for right now, on the Temple Mount, where the original temple was. And they will resume sacrifices. But sometime in the middle of the seven years, the Antichrist will put an end to the sacrifice. Now let's move over to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Reading from verse 5. And he was given a mouth speaking great things of blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blasphemy his name his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. 
All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Now, brothers and sisters, if you're saved today, your name's written in that book of life. Amen? Amen. And God's going to take us out of this earth because we are not appointed to the wrath. And when this Antichrist gets here and starts to persecute the saints, God's going to take us and rapture us off this planet. And we will not be here for the wrath that God is going to inflict on the people left that haven't given their lives to the Lord. Do you understand? But praise God. Praise Yeshua, that's how you say Jesus in Hebrew, that you and me are saved. Amen? Amen. Reading verse 11, Then I saw another beast come out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. Now this is a false prophet, what would be considered a false prophet because he's like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. So it'll be a religious leader and there's two horns. So two religious leaders that will come and we'll read from verse five. It says, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. We know that we're talking about the Antichrist. And if the people that are left do not get this mark, they can't buy food. They'll die. They'll starve. But brothers and sisters, if you don't go up with the church and you're left, don't get the mark. Better to starve and go to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Reading chapter 14, verse 1. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing with their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are the ones who follow the Lamb everywhere He goes. These are redeemed from among men, being first fruits of God and to the Lamb. So these are 144,000 chosen Jews that are not ready to go up to be with the Lord when he comes to take his church. And they will be suffering during this tribulation. And some may die for the Lord. They may be martyrs. They're not going to get the mark of the beast. They're not going to worship his image. And they're going to be with the Lord forever and ever. God's going to bless them. As he says in Matthew 20, the first will be last and the last will be first. And so 
He's going to lift them up. You understand? But we'll all be with our Lord and Savior together. We're all part of the marriage. And if you're born again today, and the Antichrist gets here, starts persecuting the saints, God says we are not appointed to the wrath, and that's when the tribulation hits, and he will take us up out of here. You understand? So be ready. Be ready. Be right with God. And do it today. Reading verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and receive the mark of his name. So brothers and sisters, if you're in Israel and you're not ready at the time and this happens, be one of those 144,000 that don't worship the beast. And God will redeem you from this earth. And we'll all be together, Gentiles and Jews alike, that worship Yeshua, Jesus, and God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Let's look at a Chapter 3 of Malachi, verse 16. Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. And so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Amen? Amen. So keep serving him, pleasing God and doing his will. Amen? Amen. One last verse. This is found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Can't get any plainer than that, brothers and sisters. You've got to practice righteousness to be God's. That's obedience. That's repentance. So turn from your sinful ways if you haven't. And he knows you're going to make a mistake. And when you do, praise Yeshua, praise God that he forgives us. Ask for forgiveness when you sin, and he will forgive you. But don't go back sinning the way you did before you were saved. As the scripture is clear in Hebrews 10, 26, if you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. And brothers and sisters, that sacrifice was Jesus dying on the cross for you and me. So, Get right with God and be ready because the day is coming. It's coming soon. So be right with God and we'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday, forever and ever. So today is a new day and tomorrow's going to get better because you and I are going to be right with God and be ready for Him to take up the church. Amen? Amen.